Welcome to my project ideas. This is an ongoing series on SAP UI5 projects. And in this particular video, we'll learn how to create a custom message popover in SAP UI5. So you need to have basic knowledge of JavaScript. And also you need to have IDE access. It can be Web IDE or it can be Business Application Studio. And certainly you'll need to have basic knowledge of SAP UI5. So before we start with the video, we'll also share this particular link in the description of the video where you can find all the theoretical knowledge as well as the code that we are going to discuss in this video. It contains the code for view, the XML file and the code for the controller, the JavaScript file. And also we have shown the output, how exactly it looks. So before we jump into actual coding, we'll just demo the version that we have already created. So in this particular layout, you can see we have a button here for get success message, a button to get error message and a popover. When popover is clicked, nothing is shown as of now. But when you click on get success message, let's close this one. You will see the pop-up is uh, now highlighted and also it has a number as one. When you click the get error message, the number has been incremented by one and also the popover remains highlighted. When you click on the popover, it opens something like this where you see there is a message for success, there is a message for error. So we have created this custom message popover using JavaScript. So let's jump into the code part now. The code part is very simple. So we'll start with the view first. As you can see here in the view, we have something called the title here, right? This title is maintained here in the custom header. So within the page, we have created a custom header. Inside that we have bar, right? So this is the bar that we are talking right now. And within the bar, we have three sections, left, middle, and right. The left side has a button. The button has no text. And uh, it comes like uh, once the message length is increased. If you see, we have a something called message length here. The popover contains the value of the text. So whatever model is feeded, it comes here. So whenever we click on success error, the value gets incremented and the text is added here. Uh, otherwise, if I just refresh, by default, nothing will come. So let it refresh. Yeah. And then in the middle, we have the title. That's it. So if you see, this is the title. And in the right side, we have two buttons. The first button is to get success message and the other one is to get error message. And for each buttons, we have press functionality, right? On success, on error, handle message popover press. So these things are like uh, controlled via the controller. Fine. And uh, apart from that, one more thing is like uh, type is mentioned here. This type is also maintained by the controller. So all these thing where we are mapping the model it is maintained by the controller otherwise everything is hard coded here right so if i jump to the controller part if you see in the defined part we have something called message box message stores which is not required as of now but we have something called message popover and message popover item so using these components we create the message popover and uh, then we have some global variable for the message template so we have two things here type and title so if I jump into the code, click on this button, open it up, you see we have a type, type is success and then we have a title which is a success message. So these things are maintained in this template. And then we have a model for the message popover. So whenever we create O message popover or we trigger it, a model is already created on top of that. So these components are coming from the define section. So sap.m.messagePopover is used to create the popover so whenever you click on this particular button this popover is opening up right so this is created here and uh, whatever content is being shown is created here so if you see within the template we are just showing this content so after this hard coding is done in the top then we come into the actual life cycle of the ui5 controller so the very first thing that hit like whenever you start an application in sap ui5 on and it is triggered automatically right so in that particular 
on internet functionality we have something called pop message model so by default the message length is set as empty the type is set as default so if i discuss that here in terms of visuality you will see that uh, whenever the application loads the type is not highlighted right it is the normal type that is default and there is no text coming like the message length is empty right so that is empty here and this is set in the ui using these two functionality so we set this model and give it the name pop over model if i go to main view you see pop over model is used here make sense and then we have something called pop model where we are also setting the same thing so this is the model that we will fetch and you know reuse later on so now i can go to this uh, button functionality get success message right so within the success message what i do i create a hard coded text called this is a success message and then i have a uh, empty array that is called w underscore data and in within this particular w underscore data we push this value in a form of object so why we are pushing it as an object because it is the way that we have defined the template here type and title so type that is defined as t and title that is defined as x right s so for success the type is success the message is hard coded here this is a success message and that's it and then we can just pull the model that is already there and push the latest content so why we are pulling the previous message it's like whenever you perform a new operation you need to fetch whatever was already there and append your latest changes or concatenate your latest changes so when i say concatenate it means within an array if you concatenate you are actually pushing the data behind the actual data so what we do is like we check if the previous data is empty if it is empty then what we do we just maintain the data that we have created and if it is not empty then we just concatenate whatever data was there with the latest data right and then we have a new like uh, you can say a new array is there where we have the latest data and then we get the model from the message popover so if you remember o message popover is set in the on init part this is just an empty model we get the model from the ui and uh, then set the latest data and then just refresh this model so just refreshing this model will not work we have to reset a lot of things right so it's like uh, whenever you click here what will happen um, data will be set it will start uh, showing in the popover model right but apart from that we have to increase the length right so we have to increase the length by one then we have to change the type as emphasized so that it is highlighted and then we need to refresh the entire model the same thing we are doing fine and uh, the same functionality we have maintained for error also so if you see that uh, this particular message created similar to the success one and similar to the success one we are getting the previous model we are seeing if it is empty or not accordingly we are performing some operations here and then we are send, like setting the same updated one in the model and thereafter we are updating the message length we are updating the type of the message popover and then refreshing the entire model so that's the only operation we are doing on success and on error in real life scenario what will happen is like you will get these success and error messages from sapo data so in real time examples you can say that uh, you are performing current operation like create update read and delete and during creation of certain data you will get success and error from backend and you can directly set those data in place of this message and based on type of the you know message that is the 200 202 if it is success we will set the type as success in case it is of information we can set that also and warning also can be set and also error 404 501 these things can be set here so based upon our requirement we can append we can change the configuration here and the last one is opening the popover so popover has something of its own uh, you know uh, property called toggle so when you toggle it opens up and closes and uh, within that we have mentioned o event dot get source so that it opens up exactly where the button is clicked so like here only you know when you click 
it toggles it either opens up or closes so this is the entire code that we have written and if i just you know showcase the same thing using console or you know using a debugging mode uh, we can see here what exactly will happen so if i'll go to controller and i will click on on in it i will just refresh this particular page so this is i'm doing just to showcase the same code in actual running scenario okay and if i just uh, you know go to full screen and go one by one so if you see a model is created right and within a model we have over data right and within the over data we have the length as empty type as default and same thing will happen with the pop model see the pop model same over data is there but it is all empty right same thing i was discussing so this is for the model like uh, that will be binded with the popover and this is the model that is actually sending the success and error so we are setting the empty one here fine just play it up go back and we'll put a debugger on success and one on error and one on here fine click on get success message you see we have a message variable here and the same message is posted inside the this particular w data so if i just click and go to console and clear it up and paste it like this you can see w data is an array of object within the array we have an object which has a component s and t and it has values like this is a success message t is the type fine and this particular thing will be concatenated into previous so before we concatenate i will just showcase what is the previous value coming as of now previous is an empty object so for an empty object the concatenation it will not work so i will just see what will previous will look now it looks like an array and if i just uh, see if previous is not equal to empty it is true right it is not equal to empty it is an array so this part and this concatenation part will work and then we'll be starting to update the model one by one whenever i click it will jump here to toggle it up fine now i will click on get error message again the debugger has stopped and i want to showcase the previous value now so previous was coming empty right now i have added the previous once again in the console if you see w data was pushed here this particular previous became something like this and if i just uh, go on go on publish the data is added here if i click the cutter success again and try the previous one if you see in the same model we are pushing the success error success error bit by bit so in this way we handle multiple success and error messages all together in sap ui5 using message popover integration so i believe this video was helpful to you in case you have any questions you can drop in the comment section thank you